Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Jonathan Lloyd Walker, showrunner of Van Helsing. I'm hanging with your boy, Galaxy, on Comic-Con Radio. I had a dream once. Our world had ended. Vampires had taken over. And I was the only one that could stop them. It was no dream. I'm nothing special. Somebody thought you were. You want me? Here I am. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing in for Comic-Con Radio. Coverage of pop culture events from around the globe. Amazing interviews with celebrities. Daily recaps and reviews of popular television. The Walking Dead. Z Nation. Van Helsing. DC Titans. Flash. The Legends of Tomorrow. Black Lightning. American Horror Story. Green Arrow. Movie reviews. Everything Comic-Con and fandom from around the globe. Comic-Con Radio. Get ready to enter our universe. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is your boy Galaxy on Comic-Con Radio. Today, we have a cool guest. He's straight from Canada, Hollywood, Europe, England. He's everywhere. We have the amazing Jonathan L. Walker from Van Helsing. What's up, Jonathan? How are you today? I'm fantastic. How are you, Galaxy? Thank you so much. We are excited to have you on the show. My pleasure. Happy to do it. That's amazing. So... What's going on? You are the new showrunner for season four of Van Helsing. Wow. Yeah, it's a pretty exciting thing. I've been looking forward to this opportunity for a while, and finally, the time is now. That's great. So you're based in Canada, but I know you have a British background. Were you raised there? Yeah, I was born in England, and I lived there until I was about uh, 13, and um, and then we moved to Canada. My mum had uh, remarried a Canadian, and so we moved, and for the most part, I lost my accent. I still get it back when I'm around other British people or if I go home for a while, but no, I've been living here in Canada now for a long time, and this is home. That's pretty cool. Everybody knows you as a executive producer for Van Helsing, but also... Many people know you as an actor as well. You've been in many major motion pictures and TV shows in your career. Yeah. I, you know, I, for, for a long time, I was really mostly focusing on being an actor, and, and that was sort of the, the hook that I ha- hung my hat on, so to speak. But all the while through that, I was always writing projects and um, was lucky enough to sell some scripts and get hired to do some things. And then eventually, a few years ago, I started to think about switching hats and putting more focus into the writing and producing. And, uh, and you know, although I still do some acting here and there, I just finished working on um, Snowpiercer for TNT. I'm mostly now just wearing the writing producing hat. There's a big difference between a radio producer, a TV producer, and a movie producer, an executive producer. Can you explain the difference to the fans out there? Because I know there's a huge difference between that role. Sure. I mean, you know, the the term producer is, is in a general sense is a kind of a catch-all for a, a wide range of different types of job categories in different fields. Obviously, the job of a, a producer is, is usually to try and shepherd some element of uh, production, be it in, in radio or TV or film, uh, to get the product actually to a, pl- a state where it's being completed. So there are certainly people who uh, specialize more in the kind of money end of things. They're more about putting the deals together and hiring people and you know uh, distributing stuff. And then there are people who are more on the creative end of things. That's certainly the end of the business that I live in. There's various levels within a TV show, for instance, of different levels of creative writers. All writers are usually some level of producer, from story editor through you know consulting producer all the way up to co-EP, EP, and, you know, showrunner. So um, that's the ladder that most writers will climb in a TV room. But that ultimately, their, their job is to be creatively involved in making the show realized. Of course, because, you know, we have producers here on Comic-Con Radio, and their jobs are to get guests and to make sure everything runs well. And I know executive producers on a movie, some of them go after money. So there's different producer hats. I wanted to get the fans to hear it from your mouth because you've been executive producer on Van Helsing for the past three seasons. And I know the showrunner position is a very covenant position. And what does a showrunner do? 
That's a really good question. Well, what a showrunner does is basically they are sort of the equivalent of the captain of the ship. They're responsible for overseeing all areas of production. So everything from making sure that the scripts are are being executed and that they're following a vision that they've laid out for the show for the season, making sure that the crew are hired. And they're basically trying to oversee all elements of the creative side of the house. That's pretty cool. You know, I think the showrunner is the end all be all. I know what a showrunner does, but I wanted the fans to know it and hear it from your mouth, you know, as the showrunner. And I think the showrunner is the most covenant role in a TV series because you're making all the decisions. Everything rests on your shoulders. Yeah, it really does. I mean, you know, it's a stressful position from the point of view of, you know, it all the buck stops with you in terms of the the end product. So if um, if people watch a show and they're they're excited by it and they think it's fantastic, then obviously it's a team effort and all departments have come into play to make that happen. But the showrunner has been the person who, you know, uh, has tried to be most instrumental in helping that to be realized. But they also, by the same token, if the show is is not a success. Um, if people aren't as happy with it, the buck stops here as well. So, you know, um, it, it's a, certainly a, a position of, of great responsibility um, and great influence, um, but also quite a bit of pressure. Yeah, it's basically like if you're working for a company, you're the project manager. You get hired, you get fired first, you get the award first, but you also get canned first. It's kind of stressful, man. But That's it's exactly ama- right. Yeah, and it's amazing that you got that. And Van Helsing is an amazing show. You know, we are huge supporters of the show. We've had many of the cast members on, and we goof around, and we have premonitions, and we get to chat with them. The show is doing well. And I think with you coming on, with all your acting experience and producing experience, I think that's going to play a huge role, man. I'm really excited about it. Well, thank you. I take a lot of pride in the fact that um, coming from the background that I do, that I do have a sort of a special window into the, uh, the the relationship that actors have with the roles and the kind of things that they get excited about, you know, um, t- twists and turns for their character arcs over the course of the season. And so I've really tried to invest in, in some great new, uh, fresh ideas for some of our cast. And I think uh, you're going to see in season four a lot of new and interesting uh, changes and uh, adventures for our, our actors. That's pretty cool because Van Helsing is an amazing show. I would have never wanted to go away ever because it's so great. It has such a fan following and it has such a big history with the Van Helsing name and history behind it being in the, you know, vamp lore. So it's such a good, what do you say, franchise that's being built. And, you know, the downfall of it was because it took a little bit for people to get to know it because, you know, it's on sci-fi and sometimes it takes a while. But I think now with the help of Netflix and all that and also the show doing well and you coming on, the doors opening. And I think the season four is that money season. And now it's on your shoulders, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, uh, you know, I'm very excited to be the recipient of the, you know, the proverbial torch that's been handed to me uh, by Neil Labute. Neil is obviously a fantastic writer writer, playwright, director, um, a, a real creative tour de force. And, uh, you know, he did very, very well in uh, shaping the origins of this show. And my job now is to not only keep it going in terms of the elements that the audience love and have come to relate to, but also pushing it in some new directions and putting my own stamp on it and uh, and seeing what we can do to, to make it bigger and better and more exciting. You know, what's funny, me and Alex Pavnovic, we talked on the show and I've had Jennifer Chion a couple of times and I had a premonition because they were worried that it wouldn't get uh, signed to season four. And I was like, you know, I had a dream one night that the show got approved. I saw Penn, I saw Van Helsing. And usually when I have these dreams, they come true and these shows get approved and I get calls from, you know, producers and people like that. Hey, did you dream about my show? And we had a thing with Alex. He was like, if the show gets approved and your and your premonition comes true, I want you on the set. And it came true. And I was like, yay, you know, but uh, it, it's kind of cool that we played that little game along the way in season three. And now look, you're in season four. You take it over the torch, your experience behind it. You know, the fans are lucky to get into a new season and I think it's going to grow even bigger than it is. 
Well, thank you. I mean, you're always walking a very fine line with with shows because even if they have done well ratings wise, even if there's a, an audience appetite and interest in them, there's never a guarantee that a show is going to return. You know, there's a lot of factors involved in in that sort of decision. Network executives can change, mandates for networks can change, um, distribution models and business aspects of the equation can change. And so, whenever you get a renewal, you're always super super happy. But yeah, it's a very nervous time for actors and writers and producers in between seasons because you just you just don't know so you you, you hope and uh, luckily for us we were uh, fortunate enough to get renewed and here we go do you feel some sort of pressure well I think there's always a pressure look I mean my, my job and, and my ambition is to deliver a great show for the audience I, I want people not only people who've been loyal to us um, over the you know past few years and really rooted for the show, I would love to attract you know some new eyeballs to the show as well. And and so the pressure is just basically look there's a lot of people working on this show. They all love to be a part of it. They want to continue to be a part of it. And so I have to make sure that we deliver something that uh, the audience are going to get excited about and want to keep coming back for. I know you probably get many people that reach out to you because they they know you're the showrunner. And, you know, you make a lot of the decisions, so you know of what's going on. Do you get a lot of fans now reaching out because you're the new showrunner? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, this is an interesting age because in the past, there wouldn't really be a way for the fans to directly interact with writers or producers of a show beyond sending in, you know, a piece of fan mail or something. Now, obviously, with the advent of social media and the interaction of things like uh, Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. There's a much more direct line. So, you know, we are definitely plugged into the fan base through those mediums. We take the good and the bad in terms of commentary that people offer up. You know, sometimes it can be a place where sometimes people are negative for the sake of being negative, but there's been a lot of praise, a lot of love, and even some, you know, suggestions or ideas that people have made that we've listened to. So it's great to hear from the fans. I love, you know, the fan base that's active and engaged and wants to help promote the show. It's it's good for all of us. And, and a big part of the reason we got our renewal, because, you know, a very diehard group of fans were able to help promote the show and uh, raise awareness, and they played a big part in us getting season four. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, we have this hashtag. It's called Watch Live. And we started it about two years ago. And we let our hashtag Watch Life loose on Van Helsing because, you know, okay, it's a show we follow. Yes, it's content for us. But our team here in the studio loves the show. They watch it week after week and they get a kick out of it. And knowing the cast members and all that makes it very personal. And that's a really cool vibe. And you're right, social media has changed the way that everyone thinks these days because you get ideas, you get thoughts, even if you don't reply back to them, you're still reading it and you're like, oh my God, did I really think that or not think that? Do you think that really does help or do you think that steers you a certain way? Well, I think, look, at the end of the day, we as a group of writers working on a show are going to be the ones that are trying to map out our own creative vision for the show. That doesn't mean at all that the creative input from the fans isn't going to matter. It does matter, but ultimately we're still going to make our own decisions about which way we want the show to go. But I'll give you a great point because you mentioned uh, Jennifer Cheon before. When we first developed that character of Ivory, we weren't sure that that was a character that was going to stick around. We thought that was probably a character that had two or three episodes in it, and then probably she was going to get killed, and then that was that. But she was so good, and the fans responded to her so clearly, and we got so much feedback from people saying, oh my God, I love Ivory. Ivory's awesome. She's so cool that she became part of the fabric of the show in a way that we were you know, really keen to keep developing her character and keep her involved so the, you know again uh, uh, she's she's become a bigger player in the show because the fans responded to her so clearly and so vocally she's a really cool gal we love her to death and uh, we created this hashtag called scavery her and scab together are a force <laughs> man and yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I see it. I see it a lot. And um, it must be so lovely from your end to see everything flourish so well. Do you feel sometimes when you're like, oh, my God, you know, it was a thought, an idea. Now it's look where it's at. How does that feel for you? It's always an amazingly rewarding feeling to see the 
you know, the, the efforts that you've put so much, you know, time and energy and, and thought into coming to fruition for an audience to respond to them, for people to get excited. I mean, you know, we had a, an amazing experience at Comic-Con last summer to have a, a huge room filled with people that had all, you know, decided to show up to support and encourage us when the show was so, so fantastic. The group of fans that showed up at Comic-Con were unbelievable. And so it's, that's the reward. The reward is seeing that you're putting a smile on people's face, that you're engaging them, that they look forward to, you know, um, watching the show and, and getting involved in it. And, uh, and that that's the best is to see the fans be happy. It is absolutely because the fans are who draws the numbers these days. It's all about the fans. The fans kind of control everything. You got to listen to them. You got to go along with it. And you're a really good actor. You know, I can say myself, you've played some amazing roles. When you're producing and you're writing and you're doing all that, sometimes do you feel that you get a little itch? You want to act in that show too because the show's doing so amazing. You're like, oh my god, I would be great at this role. <laughs> well, it's funny. It's funny that you say that. I mean, in season one, there was a period of time where Neil uh, Labib was sort of encouraging me to take a role in the show, and interestingly for me, with shows that I write and produce, I tend. Although you're right, there's roles that come along and I'm like, oh my God, I'd love that would be so much fun to play. I, I tend not to take roles in them now because the job is so all consuming. And when you're working with a crew and they know you in a certain capacity to then suddenly show up on set in a in wardrobe and, and be doing something different can sometimes be a little confusing. So I haven't done it on the shows that I write and produce. However, this past you know couple of years, when I've had a break um, from writing and producing shows, it's just so happened that this you know this show for TNT Snowpiercer came up, and um, I was lucky enough to get involved with the first pilot that they did. And then when they kind of rebooted what they were going to do with the show, they invited me to come back, and it just happened to fit in a window where I had some time and availability to do it. And so I got to scratch that itch of of acting by going and doing a different show that I wasn't involved in writing and producing. And in some ways that was kind of better because I could just be an actor on that one and I could be a showrunner on this one and, and keep them separate. And I think that works best. I get it. You know, you can't be the coach and the go-to guy and have this serious role in a show where the actor's like, oh my God. And then all of a sudden go stand next to them and be a cast member because then it becomes, hey, this is our fellow guy. And it changes things. You're right. You're right. A, a coach of a major NFL football team can't just go start playing. You know, then the respect factor kind of changes. But, uh, you know, you being a very good actor, it would be hard for me, man. It would be so hard because the show is doing well. It's on its fourth season. And you would probably play like an amazing hierarchy person or this like doctor that controls everything <laughs> and a very serious role <laughs> in the TV show. But, um, Hey, man, kudos to you that you could control yourself that well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I really appreciate that. And, uh, and yeah, it is. listen, there's temptations all the time to, to jump in, but that's a really great analogy that you used. It is, it is like being you know, the head coach of a football team, and then if suddenly you call a play and then you run on the field and you say, no, no, I'm going to quarterback this play, they would be like, what? <laughs> What's going on? This doesn't make any sense. So that's exactly it. That's exactly the dilemma that I have sometimes. And uh, it's why, I, for this show, I stay on the sidelines. Are we getting more? episodes for Van Helsing or is it the traditional 13 episodes because it's you know Friday the 13th that number what's interesting you know it, these days it used to be in the old days that a show most shows one hour TV dramas were all sort of 23 episodes a season but now the game has changed because you've got limited series that come out and sometimes those are you know six episodes some of the English series are six episodes eight episodes is a number 10 is a more common number these days uh, but 13 worked really well for us, and and I kind of, as a model, I like 13 because what it enables you to do is, you, I almost think of it as there's part one of the season, which is the first six episodes. There's part two of the season, which is the back six episodes, and then there's this episode in the middle, um, episode number seven, which is almost like the hinge of the season. So for us creatively to have that opportunity to build towards a really good mid-season, uh, exciting, uh, you know, turn, 
um, surprise the audience with something they weren't expecting, and then carry on with your story from there. It kind of almost gives you like two seasons in one kind of a vibe. And uh, that's the model we've worked with for the past couple of years. You know, like for instance, a couple of seasons ago, the big seven episode seven hinge was that Vanessa realizes that Scarlett is actually her sister and that they both, you know, came out of the same lab, the farm together and had been separated and didn't know it. So that was, it's moments like that. So, you know, without giving anything away, we've got a big hinge uh, moment coming up for our episode seven for this season that I think the fans are going to be both really excited by and surprised by. And uh, hopefully it will propel us into uh, into some pretty exciting new territory for the back half of the season. That's a pretty great formula. And the way you put it makes a lot of sense. See, the people have all these questions. You know, they email us because we've had so many of the cast members on and we push the show so much and we're so about Van Helsing. It's like every other day type of thing here on Comic-Con Radio. So they ask us all these questions. And I'm like, hey, we're going to have Jonathan on and we're going to ask him all these questions because it, it makes sense now. <laughs> Right. You split it into two parts. Number yeah. seven's the hinge, the first half, the second half. And if that formula is working, it's amazing. You know, a lot of the fans, they're used to Arrow and Flash with these 22, 23 episode shows. But 13 is a good number, man. It's a great number. Yeah, 13 is a really good number because I can tell you just from a creative point of view, when you get into those 22, 23 episode seasons, it becomes hard to maintain the level of creativity in a writing room to break 23 really good stories. You're going to end up having some that fall through the cracks a little bit that maybe aren't as good because there's just such a volume of scripts to generate in one season. So for us, 13, it's a good number because it, we are able to put a lot of heart and soul in and thought into all of those episodes and get them into really good shape uh, without feeling like we're overloaded with a whole bunch of other episodes to deal with. So yeah, we like 13. 13 is a good number. That's a great idea. And that's absolutely smart because you know a lot of these superhero shows they fall back on the superheroes history character the comic books the cartoons and all that so if a few episodes aren't that good the fans are like well that's flash that's arrow i've been dealing with them for 50 years and here comes vanessa van helsing a new character and 13 is just right so that answered everybody's need and they should not ever message us anymore about that because you heard it from you the, the showrunner the the co- Coach, the head coach of this year. Hey, man, you got a lot resting on you. What do you think? Is it going to be amazing? Or are you going to go more into drama or more into action? Well, that's a really good question. I think, um, I think what I can say about this season is we're definitely headed into some new territory with some exciting new cast that are coming in to the show, new characters in new areas that we've never been to before. So, you know, the, the only thing I can tell you doesn't spoil too much is that we introduced an amazing new character at the end of last season in the very last episode. For those that were paying close attention, uh, the character is called Hanson. It's played by an actor called Neil McDonough. And uh, lots of people know Neil. He's done uh, some incredible work on a number of different genre shows, but also some mainstream drama. He's a great actor. And so we teed him up at the end of last season, and he's got a really interesting role to play in things as season four unfolds. And there's some stuff in store, and again, I can't get into the details of it, but there's some stuff in store that's going to blow people's minds. It's going to be, there's a lot of action, but I'm really a big fan of sort of the character intrigue, and we've just got such a great cast of actors that really deliver. So you're going to see some stuff that... uh, that takes it in a new direction and is really surprising. Neil McDonough is a great actor. He was on The Arrow. He's on Legends of Tomorrow. And he's on a new TV show called Project Blue Book. And I've noticed with him, he comes in kind of mid-series, maybe a couple of seasons are there, takes the show to another level, and then like exits and the show's doing amazing again. So that's a smart move to bring him on because people love him. He just has that intriguing look. He plays his role really well, and then he's on another level type of actor. You know, he's he's really great. So that's smart, man. You're already doing amazing. Already they're clapping for you, Jonathan, and they're, they're going to back you up. We're going to back <laughs> you up. We got your back. You know, anytime you want to send anything to us, us to push it out to our fans we're here for you because they love van helsing and that's all they're going to hear <laughs> once your show starts <laughs> so they're going to have to tune in whether they like it or not what else can you kind of share with us i know you can't say too much because you know it's not cool but what else can you share with us little sneak tidbits of any ideas anything that you might think that it's okay to share 
Wow, that's uh, that's a tricky one. I think. Um, can I tell you that doesn't spoil things? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know. Right? Um, there are all I can re- all I can really say is other than Neil McDonough, there's going to be uh, a couple of new really important additions to the cast. This is a season where we really dug in at the end of last season to this idea that the vampires have started to figure out how to open this pathway to possibly bringing the dark one back. And that's very much going to be at the forefront of our story for this season is what are the vampires going to be able to do to possibly bring this about? And what are our heroes going to be able to do to try and stop that from happening? It's a pretty fundamental and important shift that could be happening in the power struggle between humans and vampires. And we've had a lot of seasons where it's been about Van Helsing's trying to figure out, you know, who and what they are, but not maybe having to counter the bigger picture of how bad things might get if the Dark One were to return. And they're really going to have to embrace that this season because uh, things are changing. Oh, yeah. Things are changing. You know, last season you left off with Christopher Heyerdahl, which is an amazing actor. Sam, he turns into this, like, devil-like creature with horns. And then Jonathan Scarf, Axel's character, he's, like, uh, hating Vanessa. It left off really crazy, and the fans are like, what's going to be happening? Because everybody was so in love with each other, and now there's this big divide and all these crazy things happening and that new city. You're on a great path. I'm going to be honest with you. I know The Walking Dead is very different from your show because they use zombies but i think you have that walking dead essence hitting on into the season four and that's an amazing formula because look at them they're hitting season 10 pretty soon i think you guys are there and you have that essence of this town and this divide and i always tell everyone drama and action together if it's done right OMG, it's the most amazing show you could possibly think. And you're probably sitting there and just trying to orchestrate this. And it must be crazy but fun and so much pressure. Do you sometimes feel like, hey, if I do this, you think that's going to happen? Or if I write that, that's going to happen? Do you think um, that kind of makes your mind uh, cross over sometimes? Do you, do you get worried about those decisions? Well, I think, you know, the important thing is is that you make decisions because the, the worst thing possible is to just be so worried about if you go down path A, it might be good or bad. If you go down path B, it might be good or bad. So just don't go down either path you'd be stuck and you wouldn't be doing your job. So for me, I have to make decisions and I have to hope I'm making the right ones. But, you know, you make them with confidence and you see how they turn out. I mean, there's so many complex aspects to it. There's whether the scripts are delivering on the, you know, the hope and dreams that you have for the for the show. Casting is so important. You know, are you getting the right actors who can deliver the work and make new and interesting characters that people are going to get excited by? They're all big decisions, but at the end of the day, that's the job. And if we're able to regroup at the end of uh, season four airing, and we'll see if it's been a success, if people have liked the direction I've taken it and, and how it's unfolded. Well, what we would love to do, Jonathan, if you're up for it, we would like to bring you on like a couple of episodes into the new season to kind of discuss what's up. Jennifer is our guest like that. We try to bring her on as much as we can because we love her character and she chats about everything and she's cool. And to have the showrunner come on and explain things of what's happened already in your way that would be so cool, and uh, we would love to have that uh, to happen because it's just a certain uh, point of view that you get, you know, not from a cast member, from from someone that like created it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I'm. All, I listen. I'm. I appreciate uh, the support, and I appreciate you know the, all that you're doing, and, and I'm happy to uh, to come back on and talk about the show and and you know engage with the fans. So uh, yeah, let's let's arrange that. I'll do that for sure. Awesome, man. Is there? Any other projects you're working on other than Van Helsing at the moment? Yeah, I've got a couple of other things going on. In the break between last season of Van Helsing and this season of Van Helsing, I did a couple other projects. So there's an amazing show coming up uh, on Netflix uh, that you should all watch out for. Uh, The show is called Woo Assassins, W-U Assassins. It is an amazing series that is going to air probably uh, summertime next year. Uh, Netflix are super excited about it. They're going to put a big push on promoting the show, and it's going to be super cool. It's an action show. It's unlike anything I think that uh, I've worked on before, and, and I think uh, it'll be a really fresh uh, show. So just check it out. And also, I uh, was writing for a show 
a Canadian show up here called The Murders, which is uh, an investigative detective show. It will be on Canadian television. I think it starts on Canadian television next uh, spring. Uh, and so that's going on. And then obviously I was acting as well on uh, Snowpiercer for TNT. That show is also, I believe, scheduled to start airing on TNT uh, in the U.S. and on Netflix internationally uh, starting in uh, July or August the coming year. So that one's a big one, too. So, yeah, lots of different projects that are uh, that are going on. I've been lucky. It's been a very busy and very challenging and, and exciting year for me. I've been involved in a lot of great projects. Well, Snowpiercer is an amazing show. You're doing so great in it. And, uh, you know, it's kind of cool to see you acting and in that role because you take acting very serious. You don't take it as a joke and you do really well in it. And Woo Assassins, what's your role in that? Because this show is going to be amazing. I heard a lot about it. I didn't want to say anything. I wanted you to say it. So what's your role in Woo Assassins? (laughs) I was uh, one of the producers on it. Uh, I sort of supervised production on that show. John Worth is the showrunner on that, who people may know from Hell on Wheels, but also from the Sarah Connor Chronicles and uh, a number of other uh, pretty amazing shows. He's a super cool guy. And so working with him was a real treat. So yeah, I got to be involved on the front lines of that one, of shooting and executing that show. And it's got an incredible cast. There's some amazing Asian actors involved. Uh, Iko Ue is the lead, who a lot of people may know from movies like The Raid. Tommy Flanagan, who was in Sons of Anarchy, and Byron Mann, uh, who was in Ultra Carbon. And a real incredible stellar group of actors came together for this one. And the action in this, the fights in this, are next level. Um, Iko and his stunt team. Um, we're heavily involved in, in, you know, the look and the feel of uh, all the fight stuff. And it's this crazy blend. Wu Assassins is a crazy blend of it's a, it's a martial arts show. It's a crime series show. It's a supernatural show. It is a real genre match of a whole bunch of really cool things. But I actually think they work really well together for the show. I think it's, uh, I think it's going to be a, a big hit. Oh, yeah, it's going to be huge. And Catherine Winnick is in it, too. She's amazing. I love her from Vikings. She's one of my favorite. You also have Mark Dacascas. You know, I know Mark Dacascas' history yeah. really well. His father trained with Bruce Lee. He taught him Arnis. You have some great actors. It's going to be a triad, mafia, criminal, supernatural. And you know what's happening? I've noticed San Francisco is getting resurrected with these shows. Like, look at um, Deadly Class, based in San Francisco. Of course, filmed in Canada. You know, Woo Assassins, you know, San Francisco based because when you see Triad and Assassins, you first think of San Francisco, right? Or New York. But that's uh, really amazing. Yeah. We, we can't wait for that. When is that coming out? I don't think they've announced the exact start date of it, but I, I have a feeling that it's going to get a huge push uh, at Comic Con because I think it's going to air probably within a month or sort of t- month to two months after Comic Con. So, uh, you know, keep uh, keep your eyes and ears open for it because um, Netflix are super excited about it. They've they've just committed to put a lot of money into publicity and advertising for that show, which is something that Netflix don't do a lot of. They are very selective about which shows they they get uh, that kind of uh, big bandwagon involved with, and they have for this show. So I think. Uh, I think it's something to watch out for. Well, congratulations, man. You're producing and showrunner of two amazing shows in 2019 and acting. It can't get better than that, Jonathan. It's really great being a showrunner and then being a producer and then also an actor of some amazing things. Uh, It must feel so good. So 2019 is going really well for you. Can we say that? Yeah, we definitely can. I'm extremely lucky and very fortunate. And um, it's only uh, as a result of some uh, incredible people who have uh, believed in me and supported me and uh, I'm also the you know beneficiary of having some amazing writers around me that are helping me to craft this show in particular Van Helsing and uh, I you know it's no nobody does it alone it's uh, it's a team effort but no I'm I'm very lucky it's it's a great year so far I'm super happy Well that's so amazing is there anything you want to share with the fans before you go on your busy day Well I'll just say two things I will say thank you again to all of the fans who've been loyal and have helped to promote and advocate for this show, we wouldn't be back for season four without you. And you are a huge uh, part of our, the fabric of this show. So thank you for that. I'll remind everybody that um, season three of Van Helsing is going to air internationally on Netflix everywhere but the U.S. It will air on Netflix starting on 
February the 24th, I believe is the start date. So if you're listening from uh, a country other than the U.S., that's when you'll be able to get it on Netflix. Um, I believe it will come to Netflix in the U.S. in July of this year. And then season four, of course, will start to air again on Sci-Fi coming up in likely September or October. They usually don't give us the actual date until uh, probably finish shooting, which will be at the end of June. So, uh, you know, keep your eyes out for that. So thank you again. And uh, yeah, I'm so happy that uh, that we got a chance to chat and that um, that you guys have been such supporters of the show. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, Jonathan. And thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate you. Thank you for your talent. Thank you for taking over in season four because we just have such good vibes from it, from all your experience and who you are and who you have been for all these years. So I know we're going to see some great things happening. We can't wait for Wu Assassins. We can't wait for Van Helsing season four and all the other projects that you're going to be part of in the future. And we can't wait to have you back on the show once these shows start so we can chit-chat, pick your brain, and, uh, you know, see what's going on and see what's up. But we're really excited. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, remember this, Van Helsing, Season 4 coming up. You guys know when. The fans know more than us, trust me. Uh, Wu Assassin's coming out on Netflix. Jonathan's part of that. Snowpiercer. Jonathan plays a role in that. My God, this man is cool. Jonathan, what's your social media for all the fans? You can find me on uh, Twitter at J underscore L underscore Walker. And uh, the same, I believe, on Instagram. So, uh, yeah, either of those are, uh, are good ways to, to follow me and all that's going on. I usually also, for the fans, I usually will uh, post up some uh, behind-the-scenes pictures, too, of what's going on with us and Ben Helsing. So that's a good way to get a little sneak peek. There you go, guys. You heard it first from the showrunner of Van Helsing. He's going to send out some sneak peeks on his social media. Hit him up. Say hi. Don't send naked pics. Just say hello and uh, support the show and be really cool with this gentleman. He's a cool cat. Thank you so much, Jonathan. We're going to close out the show now. And we always say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is your boy Galaxy with Jonathan Walker from Van Helsing signing out from another amazing episode of Comic-Con Radio. We're going to give you all some kisses. Ready? Three, two, a million kisses to the world out there. Jonathan kissed you guys. He's a serious dude. And for him to do that, that's really cool. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Save those and use them during the showtime. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Love you guys. Peace out. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing out from another amazing episode of Comic-Con Radio. Tune in for your daily shows of Comic-Con Radio. Go to comic-con-radio.com. Reach us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Comic-Con Radio. You can call us toll-free right now. 800-976-0305. 800-976-0305. Comic-Con Radio, taking the world one listener at a time.